Everybody knows Hollywood loves remaking classic movies, but that's not always a bad thing. Sure, there are plenty of boring copycats out there, but for every unimaginative reimagining, there's an amazing remake that feels nothing like the original. The Thing John Carpenter's 1982 film The Thing is a remake of the 1951 The Thing from Another World. But as far as remakes go, the two movies are different creatures. Sure, both versions are set in snowy wastelands where an alien terrorizes humans and murders sled dogs. In both movies, The Thing hates fire and is defeated by a pilot, but that's where the similarities end. In the 51 movie, the monster is a gigantic humanoid vegetable. The humans work together to defeat it, which is the opposite of what happens in the remake. Instead of fighting an intellectual carrot, the characters in the 82 film face a slimy shapeshifter that absorbs and impersonates its victims. The heroes in The Thing are constantly suspicious of each other, and never sure who's human. Most importantly, the 51 film ends with the alien defeated, but the 82 film has one of the most ambiguous endings ever, as bleak and cold as Outpost 31. Why don't we just wait here for a little while, see what happens. Pale Rider Shane is one of the all-time great westerns. This 1953 film follows a mysterious gunfighter played by Alan Ladd, who defends homesteaders from an evil cattle baron. In 1985, Clint Eastwood unofficially remade the movie as Pale Rider. As the enigmatic preacher, Eastwood rides into a downtrodden mining camp and defends the locals from a powerful gold tycoon. In both movies, a cold-blooded gunslinger standing on a porch shoots down a well-meaning hothead and both movies end with the hero riding into the distance, with an obsessed kid calling out after him. Despite the similarities, there's one enormous otherworldly difference. Shane is human, and Preacher is the ghost of a dead gunfighter, who only shows up after a little girl asks God for a miracle. Little Shop of Horrors the 1986 film Little Shop of Horrors is a big, brassy musical about a nerdy florist played by Rick Moranis and a man-eating plant with dreams of world dominance. Directed by Frank Oz, this over-the-top monster flick features Steve Martin as a sadistic dentist and a giant singing Venus flytrap. The film was inspired by an off-Broadway play, but if you go further back, you can follow Little Shop's roots to the 1960 original. While the basic plot is the same for both movies, the original wasn't a musical. The blood-hungry plant is far more talkative in the remake, but the biggest difference is the ending. In the remake's theatrical ending, the hero saves the world from the giant plant, but in the original, the lead is devoured and turned into the world's most horrific flower. He was such a good boy. <coughs> Seymour! I didn't mean it. Twelve Monkeys in 1995's Twelve Monkeys, a supervirus has ravaged the Earth. The survivors send a prisoner, played by Bruce Willis, back in time to find the disease's origin. While it certainly feels like an original movie, its basic premise was lifted from a 1962 French film called La Jetée, which shares a nearly identical plot. Just like the prisoner in Twelve Monkeys, the hero of La Jetée is haunted by a childhood memory of a man gunned down at an airport. In both films, the hero discovers that, thanks to the curse of time travel, the guy he saw shot down at an airport was his future self, and now he's stuck in a never-ending time loop. What truly sets these movies apart is that Twelve Monkeys is a traditional movie, while La Jetée is experimental art. The black and white French film is only 28 minutes long and is told with still images and a narrator. Rise of the Planet of the Apes the modern Planet of the Apes franchise takes a whole lot of liberties from the original ape pentalogy. So you might not realize that 2011's Rise of the Planet of the Apes is also a remake of the fourth film in the original series, 1972's Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. Both movies follow an ape named Caesar, who leads a primate revolt against humans. But the Caesar of the 2011 remake, played by Andy Serkis, is far more benevolent than the original Caesar, played by Roddy McDowell. Serkis's character is a Moses type who leads his fellow apes to freedom, while McDowell's Caesar is driven by righteous anger and vengeance. 
Rise takes place in modern times, whereas the 1972 Conquest takes place in a totalitarian era where apes are used for slave labor. But perhaps the most important distinction is that in Rise, the apes use spears and in Conquest, they kill bad guys with machine guns. The modern reboot would have to wait another movie for that. Pete's Dragon if you compare the 1977 Pete's Dragon to the 2016 remake, you could sum up the similarities in one sentence. An orphan boy named Pete befriends a magical dragon named Elliot. Other than that, these two movies are totally different beasts. Most notably, the original Elliot is covered in scales, but the new one looks like a fuzzy green dog. And Pete's backstory is different. In the original, he's a runaway, and in the remake, he's been stranded in the forest after a car crash. Both films feature a villain who wants to capture the dragon, although the motives of the 77 villain are somewhat more sinister. We could make a million by slicing him, dicing him. The biggest difference between the two films is that the original is a musical, while there's not a single show tune in the remake. That's probably a good thing because we're not sure if Robert Redford could have pulled off the whole Mickey Rooney song and dance routine. The Magnificent Seven Antoine Fuqua's 2016 remake of The Magnificent Seven features a mustachioed Denzel Washington and a cowboy Chris Pratt fighting an army of gunslinging assassins. It might not compare to the 1960 version, which was itself a remake of Seven Samurai, but the modern update got some much-needed upgrades. The cast is much more diverse, and one of the most important characters is female, which allows for some more dynamic storytelling. In the original, Mexican farmers fend off bad Bandits. But in the remake, a group of townsfolk defend their property from a psychopathic robber baron. Washington's character is partly driven by revenge, while Yul Brenner's Man in Black is fighting for the farmers solely because it's the right thing to do. Both movies have their pros and cons, but at the end of the day, well... It was magnificent. <laughs>